So we have looked at what an exponential function looks like on a graph. And now one of the applications that we have for exponential functions is we can look at what exponential growth and decay look like. Um, we have what's called an exponential growth model, and we have an exponential decay model. It says exponential growth and decay function models, uh, quantities that increase or decrease over a fixed uh, percent during each time period. And so we've got two different models, and what's really nice about this equation is they're literally exactly the same equation. The only difference is that when something is growing or increasing or appreciating in value, we have one plus the rate of growth. And when it's decaying or it's decreasing or it's depreciating or it's decreasing in value, we have one minus the rate of growth. And that's the only difference in the two formulas. This portion of the formula, this 1 plus r, that's called the growth factor. And this portion of the formula where it's 1 minus r, that's called the decay factor. Okay, you can see the growth of the decay factor um, is equal to what's in parentheses there. Now, how we apply that formula, you're going to read the context of your uh, problem, and you're going to decide whether we're talking about growth, something's increasing, or whether we're talking about decay, something's decreasing. Okay, it says the student enrollment, E, of a high school was 1,310 in 1998, and it has increased by 10% per year since then. So that's an increase. We're going to use the growth model. Okay, so I'm going to say that the new growth, I'm just going to use Y for that. Um, that's equal to A. A is the initial enrollment, so 1,310, and then it's going to be 1 plus the rate of growth. Since it's 10% as the rate of growth, we always plug it into the formula as a percent. So to get rid of the percent sign, we always divide by 100. The word percent means out of 100. So 10 divided by 100 is equal to the decimal point 0.1. That's the value that we put into our equation. And then we put t in for time. In this case, we're going to go from 1998 to 2006. So how many years would that be? Okay, that'd be a total of eight years. Okay, so that would be the model, that, that would be the growth model that I would be using. Um, I want to follow order of operation for this, so I want to do what's inside parentheses first. So 1 plus 0.01 is just 1.1 raised to the power of 8. 1.1 is what we would say the growth factor is. Um, that's that value. I need to grab a calculator here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use my phone for my calculator. Okay, and you're going to want to turn it on its side if you're using your phone. When you do an expo oh, exponent like this, you're looking for the key on your phone. My phone, anyway, it's got X and it's got Y as the variable. So I need to put in the 1.1 that I have in parentheses. And then I'm going to hit that key. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my exponent, which is 8. And I hit equals. And you're going to get a, a, a decimal. Okay, it should be a long decimal. Don't round it off at that point. Just leave that value. And then you just want to hit the time sign. We're multiplying there. So you hit times and then put in 1,310. Hit equals. Now we're going to round. Since this is in the context of people, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. And I'm going to say that's 2,808 students is what I would project the enrollment in the year 2006. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip down here to this next one. Uh, I'm going to skip the next one and go to, go to the snowmobile example here. It says a new snowmobile costs $4,200. Uh, the value of the snowmobile decreases. Okay, Since it's decreasing, I want to use the formula that's decay. Other words that you might see that indicate a decrease are depreciate. If something depreciates in value, it goes down, or decay itself. Okay, um, So I'm going to use y again equals... That original A value in both of those equations is your initial value for your, in this case, snowmobile. So $4,200. Because it's decreasing or it's decay, it's 1 minus, and the rate is 8%. Okay, If I want to put 8 as a decimal, I have to take 8 and divide it by 100. I get 0 0.08. And I'm going to raise it to the third power in this case because they want to know the value after three years. Again, follow order of operations. So we do what's inside the parentheses first. 1 minus 0 0.08 is, I would say, y equals 4,200 
This is 0 0.92 raised to the power of 3. This would be considered the decay factor, 0 0.92. I want to raise that to the third power. I hit equals, and again, I get a decimal. Don't round that off. Just hit times, and then put in your $4,200. Hit equals. Now we're going to round it. The value of that snowmobile is now $3,270, and I'm going to say 49 cents. Okay. Any money items, we're going to go ahead and round to the nearest penny. Even though in this context, if I were selling this, I wouldn't include the 49 cents. I'd probably just list it for $3,270, or you know, maybe I want a little bit more than that, but something in that ballpark range. But if it's money on this worksheet, we are going to round to the nearest penny. So in this case, I'd say 49 cents. Okay, so you're going to read the context of the problem, decide which of these models you want to use, and then solve the equation.